The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! This This is Media Mash, a roundtable of Cowboys insiders dropping wisdom and offering sizzling takes on the current state of your Dallas Cowboys. Now your host, Nui Scruggs. Media Mash, let's ride. It is almost game day. It's Thursday. We do have football tonight. Kansas City taking on Detroit. It's the opening game. You'll see it on NBC. And then Sunday coming up on NBC5, it is the New York Giants hosting the Dallas Cowboys. Let's welcome in Jean-Jacques Taylor, author Jean-Jacques Taylor, Coach Prime. Uh, you were on the Dan Patrick Show this morning. Uh, good good stuff. Hey, and appreciate you, Doug. On 105.3 The Fan. I'm just it, trying to make my rounds. Make it, making the rounds. <laughs> making the rounds. Speaking of 105.3 The Fan, the official radio home of the Dallas Cowboys, he is Bobby Belt, the youngest member here. You, you don't got to say it like that. It's true. I was noticing like um, three spots of gray in the chin yesterday. and it's starting to it's starting to get to me. You'll be okay. I'm, I'm coming for it. have got products for that. If you'd like to go ahead and make sure it doesn't happen. Yeah, let's work on an endorsement, 105 through the fan. Okay, we got uh, Rice Father, extraordinaire. I almost said which chin, but I left it alone. Oh, come on. Wow. <laughs> come on. Come on. This is wow. Love, this is love. This is uh, we kid because we care. <laughs> kid because we care. Goodness. You, you're just so bad. You're just throwing slugs you're, you're right just, down. We're just, we're just good. We're just having <laughs> can't, fun. Can't help us. So, uh, Clarence Hill, Four Star Telegram, on his way to T Town this weekend. T Town! As the Texas Longhorns are going to defeat the Alabama Crimson Tide, as I put, I, I predicted in my Dallas Morning News picks. I'm new to Scruggs, by the way. You know, you know this, this is what I want to let you know. He, he's, he's like the people, and you know these people who used to pick the Cowboys to go to the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. So, when they didn't so, go, you yeah. can rip them. Yeah, Randy okay. Galloway was the king of that. He's the king of that. Every year I'm going to pick the Cowboys. So when they didn't meet my expectations, then I got a right to rip them. Right. That's what Nui's doing right now. I'm telling you. <laughs> that is what he's doing. I, and if I thought he wasn't doing it, the smile just gave him away. Yeah, I know, I know what he's doing. <laughs> I, I know him. Bobby, I know are, what he's doing. But they Bobby. are going to beat Bama. <laughs> I that'll be, that, that'll but be the first but of just, three I'm, losses for Bama. But I'm talking about his motivation. I'm talking about his motivation. Sure, he, his. He's trying to pat himself on the back. I picked y'all. I did this. You know, that's what him. I know him. He let me down. Yeah, all it is. I know his motivation. <laughs> we're we're just dog. we're just prepping Bama. That's all. We're prepping Bama for the disappointment to come this La- year. Last year, I picked Alabama to win the game. This year, I'm picking Texas to win the game. It's, it's just that simple. You got the referees in your pocket like they had last it's year. All, must all, must going to be the referee because referee's job did last year. Um, okay. <laughs> whatever, whatever. Whatever. Sark's got to make some fourth down calls regardless of the refs. He does need to improve, and this is his opportunity. And I, be- I believe he will do it. He'll be Let's the hope. third assistant to finally beat St. Nick. He'll join that illustrious group of Kirby Smart and Jimbo Fisher. I'll, I'll take it. I, I just need Quinn to play well. That's what I need. I need Quinn Ewers to step up. Stop throwing off the back foot. That would be <laughs> a big help right there. All right, speaking of uh, feet, let's talk about an ankle. The practice report is out. Tyron Smith missed practice today with an ankle limited, injury. Limited. He practiced, yeah. He was just limited. And that was my next thing was to go to guys, talk to me about the severity and we'll, how, how how should I be feeling? Because the last program I did, the Players Lounge, <laughs> it was death and destruction. Barry Church did everything but switch his pick to the Giants. So it, wow. it was it was DEFCON five well, on the Players Lounge. Well, so I come to you, media members, to 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 make well, us feel. The, the, the issue is that who's surprised? Who's surprised? I mean, one thing that, that again Jerry Jones talked about this week about the the. Big issue on his team was depth on the offensive line. You start the week, and now uh, Tyler Smith, you know, has a hamstring injury. And there's a question about his availability. Now, Tyron Smith, the person on the line with eight Pro Bowls, possibly a Hall of Fame in the future, his health has been a question since 2015. You know, he didn't start – he didn't, you know, miss the first 10 games last year, 11 games – no, it was 13 games last year, and then finished at right tackle because of injuries. He hasn't been healthy all season. Then he goes into training camp and gets destroyed by Micah Parsons every day. And everybody said, well, that's just Micah. That's just Micah. He's still a great player. He can still get it done. Now season open, he's hurt and got to go against Kayvon Thibodeau, and you don't know what his health is. That's an issue. That's a big issue. Uh, because who's the swing tackle that you feel good about? 
Well, he I thought he was gonna play guard. <laughs> you know, if Tyler Smith don't play two Mundogos gonna play guard. You know, he's the guy, right. the veteran. He might have to play guard and then you might have to put the rookie awesome Richards outside tackle. Like I said, who's the swing tackle that you feel good about? Again, the biggest issue on this team, Bobby, is depth on the offensive line. Yeah, I mean, who do you feel good about behind your starting offensive line, period? I mean, T.J. Bass is an undrafted free agent rookie. You've got Awesome Richards, who is a fifth-round pick. He's a rookie. You've got Tume Doga, who, honestly, of those three, even as a veteran, I probably feel the worst about the three of them and and it's just because he, he didn't look very strong in training camp he didn't look good at tackle at all he was getting bullied by more than just micah parsons out there in training camp inside when he was at guard it was a little bit better but man this is i feel like with tyron tyron i'm I, he probably should have been uh popped up on the injury report wednesday too just cut like it's like you remember how zeke for like the last three years he was here zeke was always on the bands out at practice every single practice he was out there and it felt like every single week he was probable but he was dinged up with something he, like tyron is probably at the point where it's just just put him on there just to be safe and so it doesn't surprise anybody because I, I mean this is about the most predictable injury report you know, designation we could have had this week. Well, you know, I chatted with Tyron for just a few minutes yesterday. And uh, yeah, I was trying to remember if he was there for the whole time. Did he tell you he missed practice? Because he didn't practice yesterday. We were actually about, we were actually talking about something bigger than that or something along that lines but different, <laughs> which was what's the difference between your body now and your body five, six years ago? Right. And, and right interesting now, I didn't thing make it to practice. Was that, you same, know, same, now, same, now you, same, you you, same you, guy. You just, yeah, hey, man. The the bigger issue for him though was uh, and it, it reminded me of Dirk Nowitzki talking about it in his career, just like what it takes to get your body out to practice at twenty five, twenty six. You just roll out, you just go practice, and now it's all this, you know, all this get your body warmed up and do this and do that. It takes about an hour just to get your body ready for practice, and uh, in doing so, it just tells you that, dog, you know, that's why he had to come in prepared that he was gonna miss some time, and that's why I said, you know, who's your swing tackle that you feel good about? Because that's a mistake. So, so Josh, what did he say about his health? I was asking about his body, man. I didn't know he missed practice. <laughs> well, his body is his health. Hey, that, hey. It's, it's is two your, different things. Echo connected I to your body. I wasn't digging as a beat reporter yesterday. I was the one, when I asked him, I said, do you have any fear? Right. And he said, you can't go in the game with fear. Or you can't go in the season with fear. Yeah, the fear about just getting hurt again. Just. I thought you were talking about fear of not practicing. But hey. well, I'm, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> saying, see, the difference between, the, it's the difference between you cover the beat and you cover the team. Didn't I just say that? <laughs> Didn't back I just say? Back I mean, I olden, did the back beat. In, back in the olden days, he was a, was a beat writer. He wouldn't let this. I'm a you know, beat writer, Meredith. <laughs> you know, Meredith, he wouldn't. I only care let, so much. He wouldn't let days. these obvious questions slip by. He looked at the big picture, right? But the big picture starts Sunday, and he's hurt already. There's a difference between being hurt and being hurt. Like, I mean, if he's just, if he's got another, it feels like if there's an ankle issue, Tyler Biotish has been hurt, it feels like, since middle of last year. He's been banged up with something. Something always comes up. Jerry talked about this in Oxnard. We we pulled him off the side one of those days out there in Oxnard, and he had said, somebody asked him about how he feels about Ty I think you asked him how he felt about Tyron, and he said, essentially, he's like, yeah, we know it's coming. Like, we know at some point during the year he's probably getting hurt. And it's just like, you know, okay, this is you you prepare for it and you just, you know, go full steam ahead as long as it's it's health, you know, as long as there's health there. You you ride full steam ahead. Tyron's gonna have the perspective of, you know, that he he can't go into it afraid, like you say there. He's he's gotta have that thought process. But the reality, I think, for everybody else, all the decision makers in this building is we know this is coming at some point and you just gotta prepare for it. Yeah, you got to have a plan. I so mean, is it worry? Concern, panic, right now, looking at your left side. Worry, concern, or panic? Which of the three would you take? Are, are you Dak Prescott? <laughs> Asking you. Yeah, I'm just saying, if you if you Dak Prescott, who got to be out there, you know. It's panic. It, 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 it's, it's, it's a concern. I mean, because, you know, you don't. The thing about it is, and, and they really feel they have a Super Bowl team. And the only thing that's going to mess it up is is health, injuries. And, and there's an obvious question from the start of the season of of the health of Tyron Smith. And now, you you know, this, and obviously this is week one, and I know Tyler's going to, you know, this is not going to be a long-term issue, but but the Tyler thing, I mean, I mean the Tyron thing, that's, that's a question. That might, You don't want that to be a week-to-week -week question. Yeah, I, concern. I, I don't think it's panic yet because as of this moment, my guess would be 
Tyron plays, Tyler plays. Is That's the way they're talking about it anyway. And even still, worst case scenario, at least where it stands right now, it would be Tyler being out. I, I don't think Tyron. And Adoga, I feel better about playing inside a guard than I do playing tackle. So it's concern, especially because it's Leonard Williams and it's Dexter Lawrence on the interior. But, I, I mean, there's, there's concern even if Tyron's healthy because it's Kayvon Thibodeau. And Thibodeau's entire game is, all right, threaten the edge with speed, you know, inside move. And that's the stuff that's given Tyron big problems over the last couple of years as he started having problems with the back. And just in general, his movement skills, the older he's gotten and the more banged up he's gotten. And so to me, there was concern whether everybody was fully healthy or not because Thibodeau is the exact type, exact type of rusher that gives Tyron problems. And Lawrence and Leonard Williams are as good as they are. Wink Martindale loves to uh, loves to blitz. So <coughs> seeing the news, I guess we should uh, expect Schoonmaker to get some good time in there at tight end possibly, yeah? Maybe. I mean, how far along do they feel like he is? He's He missed a lot of time, you know, throughout the training camp process. So, I mean, is he somebody that is definitely ahead of Hendershot right now? I don't know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like, could you see some max protect looks? Could you see Dowdle in there a little more? Since I think right now Dowdle's probably your best pass protector in the in the backfield. Yeah, I mean, you might, like, actually see him in there to, to – do more than just chip maybe to to try and do some blitz pickup and some other things but yeah they're they're gonna have to have a a plan for the trenches because you know Aziz Ojolari, Kayvon Thibodeau those are good rushers Dexter Lawrence Leonard Williams those are good guys on the interior and that is the thing that that is the one area heading into this game that I think if you look at the matchup receivers versus corners you know O-line versus D-line whatever else that's the one where I feel the least comfortable right now about the Cowboys having success over them Let's get our first break in here. When we get back, expectations for Tony Pollard. Does he get 1,000 yards? Does he make another Pro Bowl? Let's dive into that with Jacques Taylor, Bobby Belt, Clarence Hill. I'm Newey Scruggs. It's the Media Mash right here on DallasCowboys.com radio. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And they snap it to Prescott, who looks right. It's not there. He escapes left. He'll run for a first down. Just like football, when it comes to crypto, it's important to have a team you can trust. With blockchain.com, I know I'm in good hands. Since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at blockchain.com. Hi, I'm Danny McRae, Dallas Cowboys alumni player here with Smoothie King. And Smoothie King wants to ask you, what's that sound? That's the sound of you and everyone else absolutely loving new smoothie bowls from Smoothie King. And woo, me too. These smoothie bowls start with acai and pataya and are handcrafted with fresh toppings like sliced bananas, sweet berries, crunchy purely Elizabeth granola, and a savory peanut butter drizzle. New smoothie bowls, only at Smoothie King, the official smoothie of the Dallas Cowboys. To kick off the 2023 NFL season, Hugo Boss teamed up with the NFL and Micah Parsons to launch an iconic apparel collection featuring hoodies, crews, t-shirts, polos, joggers, and more. The bold, unique apparel of the Boss NFL Collection unites football and fashion while reflecting what it truly means to be a boss. Get yours today at nflshop.com slash Hugo Boss, at hugoboss.com, and at Boss Retail Stores. Hashtag be your own boss. We got big personalities. We got big hair, big belt buckles. We got fans all across this big state and enemies in every other one. We even got a big star on the 50-yard line. Smirnoff knows football is a wee thing, an experience that is best enjoyed together. With good drinks and good folks home or away, we rally together, we cry together, and we always rally cry together because, most of all, we got big love for them boys. Smirnoff, we do game days. Please drink responsibly. Back, back, back to back. Media Mash. Here we are on the Media Mash. Everybody's got their devices out, working hard. Clarence Hill, the Fort Worth Star Telegram on the computer, getting ready to send out some information. Bobby Belt, 105.3 The Fan, insider with the exclusive exclusives. And he got our own author, Coach Prime. The book is coming out. Jean-Jacques Taylor on the Dan Patrick Show today. Uh, That very entertaining story about how Charles Haley almost came after you, man. Um, (laughs) man, I did not know this story. Oh, you too? Did not know that about you, man. Who did they come after? Well, first Dan had brought up how 
Ed Werder bought a gun because a former Cowboy player said he wanted to know where he lived and threatened him. Wow. And then Jock's like, I didn't know about that, about Ed, but he did talk about the time where Charles Haley um, was coming for Jock and <laughs> Nate Newton intentions. told him, you need to leave now. <laughs> Come with the territory, baby. It does. I mean, but, uh, you know. I, uh, but he kind of asked for it. That was yeah. the beauty of the story. He told the truth. He I told, told the truth. He told the truth. He told I said, the truth. Yeah, I, I yeah. said in my young in my young days, I was uh, I was immature and said something I, I wouldn't say it as an older, more mature man. Correct. Understanding the situation of yeah. parenthood and all these Matter things, fact, doing things. I didn't have no kids then, <laughs> so that's that's one reason why I said what I said. Yeah. Because but, if I had some kids, I'd be like, "Hey, fool, uh, just chill on that." Yeah. So so good stuff there. All right, uh, Tony Pollard. He is the number one running back coming off a Pro Bowl season. Ezekiel Elliott is now a member of the New England Patriots. This is his show to run. Jacques, what do you need to see from Tony Pollard, and does he get at least 1,000 yards on the ground rushing? I'd be shocked if he doesn't get 1,000 yards rushing. If he doesn't get 1,000 yards rushing, then he got hurt at some point during the year. Um, I think he just needs to do what he does, man. He's a terrific terrific player. And, uh, you know, the thing I do, the thing to me that makes him special is he scores touchdowns like he's in college in terms of distance. You don't see people regularly break off 20, 30, 40, 50 yard touchdown runs in the league. Um, I think on his touchdowns last year, he averaged 33 yards a TD. That's more than anybody else in the league, including receivers. I mean, he's uh, what he can do when he gets space and makes guys miss, it's, uh, it's as impressive as you get. I mean, hell, his ability ran Zeke out of town, basically. And so now, now the difference is you are the guy now. Everybody studies your best plays to see what they can take away. And, um, you know, it's a matter of whether he can take the, take the load as being the lead guy. And we all know this on third and one with the game on the line in the uh, playoffs or at the end of the year against Philly or somebody. Can you get that yard? We know Zeke could get it because he'll run you over and get that. I mean, he was, he was really good at that. So, but can you get that yard? Yeah, I mean, Tony Pollard, he'll definitely get 1,000 yards. I mean, in this day and age, especially now that it's 17 games, as long as he stays healthy, yeah, that's 59 yards a game. If he's not getting that the way Mike McCarthy's talking about running the ball, you have problems, um, and he's he's not living up to expectations. He got 1,000 yards last year on fewer than 200 carries. So, I mean, we know his explosiveness. We know what he can do. The Cowboys have believed the entire time that he can run inside, that he can handle those sort of carries. Will McClay talked about it in the immediate aftermath after they picked him, and he, I remember, I think it was here on Dallas cowboys.com that he pointed to a run at the senior bowl where he said this is something that was important to us to see where it's like okay you can see he can run inside and that he has that ability and you know there's discussion at times with people talking about pollard where they talk about him like he's almost like 190 pounds or something he's He's, a little dude he's more stout than i think people realize he's 215 probably it's at least 210 and that's what i was going to add to it people think he's a small back he's nice. not a small back mm-hmm. you know he he has power he has strength he's a fast back he's a breakaway back but he does have power and have strength there's no question he's he's if healthy he gets a thousand 1300 is really the yeah, number there, I'm there, looking there, for. there's no question and the cowboys are not necessarily going to up his carries you know you how they used him last year was right i mean how they used him and zeke last year was right you know you don't want to you're not going to put 300 carries on him but you do want to maximize his carries what i'd like i, I don't even know if you want to make I'd, I'd rather get him more touches in space and maybe this offense where well, how you do it yeah where certainly. it's designed to get the ball to the backs a little bit more you can put him in space and make him have some plays that way but he is as important as anybody in this offense i mean it's you know much as we talk about Dak and much you talk about cooks and you know Tony Pollard is, is very important to this offense, and, and there's no question his injury was the key most important factor in that loss to the 49ers last year. That changed the whole game. That changed the whole game plan. We, we can throw all that back just a little bit, though. Not as important as anyone on this offense. I mean, he's important, but I, he, he's not more important than number four. He's not more important okay, than, but, than I mean, 88. Some, what, what, I guess what I'm saying is there's some certain things we already knew about four. You know, yeah. this, is, this is his first year as the lead runner, featured guy in that role, being that you know that guy. So that's what I'm. He, that's, yeah, that's yeah, he's where CD was last yeah, year, yeah, heading he, into he, heading yeah, into last so, season, yeah. having to show he could be. Yeah, the number and, one and he and he's the number one. I mean, he's the biggest weapon. How about that? There's no breakaway threat bigger than than Tony Pollard on this team. Sure. Who's the number two running back? In Rico. your opinion, Rico. Dowdle. There's no question it's Rico. They, they've always they've liked Dowdle the three years he's been here. He can't stay yeah. healthy. Yeah. If he would have been healthy, he would have been. Made the team a couple of years ago, right? He, he, yeah. He would, I mean, Dowdle, if he would have been healthy these three years, he would have been firmly the number three back while Zeke and Pollard were here. And 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 one thing is we 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 treat Dowdle to a certain extent like he came from 
East Tennessee State or whatever else. I mean, Damn. the guy went to South Carolina. He played major college football. You know, East, you know, East I mean, State. whatever. You should have just said directional school. I, or however you want. I said East Tennessee. I mean, whatever. But you labeled him, man. Middle Tennessee. I mean, I'm not going to do go. I'm, just say, I'm not gonna do my boy like that. Buddy Ryan? I'm not going to do my Middle Tennessee <laughs> State. It's my boy, um, Philip Tanner. Philip Tanner. Tanner. I'm not going to do Tanner like that. But I'm just saying, we, we, we act like he ain't, you know, he, he's played major. He played SEC football, you know, big boy football. South he, Carolina. He was a, yes. He, you know, he, 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 was a big time recruit coming to high school. You know, this guy has ability. Okay, I'm just, just asking. You want to no, say? No, no, I'm not attacking. I'm just saying he has ability. I'm standing like, on the table for him. You know, it's not. We, this is this is not somebody that just. He, you're, you're, you're not going to get him to to treat South Carolina like a legitimate football program after last week for his Tar Heels. So, look. Well, first of all, first of all, they, the biggest lie is they that are the biggest. The biggest don't, thought, don't go baby, down the They are state. the school I used to cover. The, okay? the biggest lie is he's not a Tar Heel fan. Sit around and get. He's an Alabama his, football fan. His, That's the other part of that. I oh, pick Texas. Is that he's he's only a North Carolina basketball fan. He's an Alabama football fan. Oh, oh, just like how there weren't like 10 million really happy Duke football fans this weekend because yeah, it's yeah, 90% I mean, of them are the basketball fans. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> Congratulations, by the way, Mac Brown. 100 wins in North Carolina <laughs> along with the 100 wins he's got at Texas despite people like Clarence Hill wanting to run back out of They ran him out for <laughs> okay, good so reason. Was, and, good and, reason. And, and it was still, time. And you still wandering it was time. the desert. Still wandering the desert. It was wishing time. you could have Mac Brown. Okay. Should have won more at Texas. Okay. Should have hired Nick Saban, but you <laughs> no, didn't. Well, you guys Mac messed did, that up. Mac messed that up. Let's be honest about it. He didn't want to. Went and, and hid in Florida for uh, if so you'd have given the, if you'd get the Ed he hid, package, he, he, hid it, he hid in Florida for a week or two while Saban was looking for houses in Austin. Like I said if you get an Ed Ogeron package, it'd been fine. You know, Ed said, "What door you want me to leave out?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you had to do. All that money they got in Texas, all somebody had to do was give him the Eddie O package, and he'd have been just fine. We, we do things with little class, okay? They weren't going to find a man without. They weren't going to find a man. Why he's in Florida hiding, recruiting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, that's what you want to say. I'm just stating the facts. Okay. Um, as we look at this game, it's going to be Mike McCarthy's play calling debut. What are your expectations, Bobby? Uh, for performance or in terms of like how this is going to look? This is we're going to judge this offense we're going by to, points and yards. Points, <laughs> yards. It, it's it's supposed to have some uh, rain out here in New Jersey on this day. But when you watch this up, when the game's over, what are you going to say, boy? I, I what do you need to see to give it a check mark in the Bobby Belt book? Uh, it's, I mean, that's that's the question. I think we're we're still trying to figure out is like what is success going to look like? That was one of the things we asked Jerry on Tuesday was that Kellen's offense for four years was one of the most successful, one of the most efficient offenses in the NFL, statistically speaking. The way we measure it, you know, the way we generally measure it, the different tools we have, it was one of the most successful offenses in the NFL the last four years, especially when Dak was healthy. When Dak was in there, they were first or second in points per game pretty much every year. So the question to me is, okay, if that's the case, what – has to look different for them to say this was a success to make this change. Like, is it a is it Listen. a threshold or is it a feeling? No. I, I think we're going to be stunned how remarkably similar the offense feels I'm from trying, last year. I'm trying to protect my damn defense. I've led the league in yards and points before. I'm trying to protect my damn defense. Those are Mike McCarthy's words. What it looks like you is protect your defense by giving them more points. I, I, I understand <laughs> what. It, it, you're right. It's going to look similar. They're going to be a fat. They like up tempo. They like doing those things. The, the the thing that he plans to make a difference certainly is the blocking schemes. Uh, certainly, I, I think it, it's it's it, it's shocking that they don't want to throw Kellen Moore on the bus. But if you talk to the receivers, the quarterback, uh, the offensive line, they all have a better understanding of this offense in just a few months than they did on the Kellen's offense that they were under for years. Well, that's we, what they, we, that's we, what they say. I, Voluntarily, though, it wasn't prompt. They volunteered. We know more. We know what we're supposed to be. We know where we're supposed to be. CDA, we know everybody's roles and jobs like they did not know that before. It's like the information that uh, think, uh, Connor uh, Williams offered when he went to Miami about the Cowboys. Right, 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 right. And Connor McGovern just offered. I'm just saying, they said we have a better understanding of our jobs and what we're supposed to do, which should, should, should limit some confusion well, that think, they've had um, in different things. Which I think the most interesting thing that we really ain't got to the bottom of, you hear a lot about it, is when Dak and McCarthy go, well, especially Dak, you know, everybody knows the purpose behind every play and what we're trying to accomplish on every play. And you like, 
That's kind of basic, ain't it? Like, you're supposed to run the clear out route because these guys are coming behind you, and that's why it's important for you to take the safety with you. Like, that's like basic elementary hey, football. That was basic in Green Bay. What, did, what happened? Him and, him and Schultz right here. Here? Him and Schultz <laughs> running the same spot. So what I'm saying, you think it's basic, but the fact that they well, that's why, that's why I, and say, yeah, I know where I'm supposed to be, and he knows where he's supposed to be, and that's going to help us not have the confusion. He brought it up. We had confusion where some of those interceptions were my fault because we were running in the same place. Yeah, We're not throwing Kelly under the bus, but this tells me that we didn't have a, a complete understanding of the offense. Look, the – they're not interested totally, I don't think, and I can't blame them in wanting to give us all the details of how it's going to be different. They like, sure. especially Mike McCarthy, since he got here, is is very big on not tipping his hand and concealment things like that. The, the consistent number. What's the consistent number we've gotten from Dak, Schottenheimer, Mike when they talk about how much of this offense is going to change? What's the number been? Thirty. Thirty percent. Thirty percent. This is a quote from Brian Schottenheimer on offensive changes. If you put a number on it, I'd say it's probably seventy percent of what they've done here, and then maybe thirty percent of ideas from Mike Solari and myself and some of the new guys. It'd be crazy to ask some of the guys to learn a completely new system. I've been working extremely hard trying to get up to speed with what they've done. They've had so much success here that was easy for me to do. You know when that quote was from? May of 2018. That's what he said with the Seahawks. He's been giving us the same light he gave when they were doing Seahawks <laughs> offensive changes. It's the same play. And so they just don't want to tip anything. They don't want to tell us anything. No. And that's you, fine. And, and, <laughs> but, you got to bring that up. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I think the biggest change, though, is, 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 is you know, anytime, well, I want to run the damn ball. I don't think he's going to run it more. But, I don't either. But but it's about when you run it. When you got a two touchdown lead, when you got things in game, it's situational. It's Jackson. Yeah. It's, You're up 14. It's Green and Bay, then, all and it's that. a three and out. It's a, it's, a, it's a Kellen Moore three and out, 58 second drive. Right. That can't that, happen. That's 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 what he's talking about. And that's what you're going to see. So, you know, it's not about, you know, are they going to average 30 points a game? You know, that, that's not the focus. By and large, the offense is more explosive. They keep talking about we're faster, we got more explosive, quick. We got big play players. You know, as Dak said in that, in that, um, when they did the uh, season preview thing with the, with the with Demarcus, yeah, with Demarcus, he said Mike told me not to chase big plays. We got big play players. Don't chase big plays. Don't force big plays. Just get the ball in your playmaker's hands, and they will come naturally. And I do want to see if they run more crossing routes, if they do run more things where you get guys in space, and, and if you hit them in stride, they can turn the corner and get upfield uh, because that allows your playmakers to do what they do. It also That's what I'm talking about. If you In most West Coast offense, although this is the Texas Coast offense, Texas Coast. you know, the backs catch 50, 60 balls, man. And then, especially with a guy like Pollard, you tackle me eight and times in open field, but the two times you missed, I holler at you. Pollard and Deuce. Don't, Deuce is going to be a part of this offense. The little guy? The little guy. <laughs> I mean, they, I've seen him work with the first team, throwing the ball, they throwing the ball out of the backfield to him in space. No, no that's that's what you should do. And, um, you know, because that's what I'm saying. You, you tackled me in open field six, seven times, but the two or three times you missed me, I holler at you in the points or big plays. So just thinking about, Tyron's ankle, mm -hmm. Tyler Smith's hamstring. Do we see more Deuce Vaughn? Add in a Cavante Turpin, trying to get the ball out quicker. Oh, I think you see a lot of a lot more three step drop, a lot more five step drop. If you if your line is messed up, that's kind of what goes with it. Yeah, and and it would Deuce be the answer if you're already talking about his, the the biggest questions about him? in part are can he stand in there and and you know blitz pick up I, I don't know like if they feel like they need extra protection in the backfield it, would that mean more dowdle well, than it would do well it depends on the situation because the, the football people i talk to will say the best way to work to, to force people out of trying to blitz deuce mm -hmm. throw the ball to him out the backfield you blitz him i'm getting the ball out to you, you got to catch him in space yeah, hit him in a hit him on a swing or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's, that, that's that's one way you can that, do it. That's the way to prevent. Okay, you, you keep blitzing. I got to get you in space. You know, can, can you can you you know can you tackle me in space? You know, so you know, there's always an answer. You know, but who's going to do it better? Okay. Let's take our second break. When we come back, defensive player of the year odds for Micah Parsons and how good. Will C.D. Lamb be this year, having gone through last year being the number one receiver in this offense for the first time? We'll talk about the Oklahoma Sooner next right here on the Media Mash on DallasCowboys.com radio. 
It's the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black. And right now, Cowboys fans can get 15% off their $75 order. Plus, because every deal needs a playmaker, your order will include a free five-piece skincare set and free shipping. The Jack Black Playmaker is four of Jack's favorites and a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Make a play for the playmaker at getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code COWBOYSVIP. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys with the code COWBOYSVIP. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And they snap it to Prescott, who looks right. It's not there. He escapes left. He'll run for a first down. Just like football, when it comes to crypto, it's important to have a team you can trust. With blockchain.com, I know I'm in good hands. Since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at blockchain.com. To kick off the 2023 NFL season, Hugo Boss teamed up with the NFL and Micah Parsons to launch an iconic apparel collection featuring hoodies, crews, t-shirts, polos, joggers, and more. The bold, unique apparel of the Boss NFL collection unites football and fashion while reflecting what it truly means to be a boss. Get yours today at nflshop.com slash Hugo Boss, at hugoboss.com, and at Boss Retail Stores. Hashtag be your own boss. We got big personalities. We got big hair, big belt buckles. We got fans all across this big state and enemies in every other one. We even got a big star on the 50-yard line. Smirnoff knows football is a wee thing, an experience that is best enjoyed together. With good drinks and good folks home or away, we rally together. We cry together, and we always rally cry together because, most of all, we got big love for them boys. Smirnoff, we do game days. Please drink responsibly. Back Back, back, to Media Mash. All right, Media Mash. I'm Newey Scruggs, along with Bobby Belt, 105.3 The Fame. We've got Jacques Taylor here. The author of the new book, Coach Prime, comes out October 10th, correct? Yes, sir. All right, get it wherever you can, and then uh, just just moseying his way on in here. <laughs> Sit down, and there he is. Pops up in your screen there. It's Claire Hill of the Star-Telegram. All right, uh, let's check out the practice report here. Uh, Jordan Lewis, cornerback injury foot and uh, he was full participant today then you got Tyler Smith hamstring did not practice today Tyler Smith, uh, Tyron Smith ankle limited today Sam Williams defense end foot limited today Donovan Wilson calf he was not a practice participant today the Giants have Running back Gary Brightwell with a knee he was limited linebacker Cam Brown with an ankle limited um Tight end Lawrence Cager with an ankle. He was limited today. DJ Davidson, defensive lineman for the Giants with a knee limited today. Cordell Flott, defensive back, hamstring limited today. Javarius Owens, defensive back with a hamstring for the Giants limited today. And Wandell Robinson, wide receiver with a knee limited today. So that is the practice report. Uh, by the way, speaking of the Giants, Tiki Barber went on his radio show and said he would take Daniel Jones. 100 times out of 100 over Dak Prescott. He just said most stop. people would, too. Just, just stop. Just Worry stop. about holding on to the football, Tiki. Just stop. It's the same Tiki Barber <laughs> that retired for the Giants and said that Eli just didn't have it, only to go to work for NBC interviewing Eli on the field as the Giants won the Super Bowl, beating the undefeated New England Patriots. <laughs> same Tiki had to watch his brother go to the Hall of Fame. He's never getting there. <laughs> wow. So Yeah, how do we know he didn't have Rondé step in and interview Eli and just say it was him? <laughs> nah, because Tiki made uh, – Eli, Eli did it. He, he wanted to make sure – come on, yeah, come on. Like, like Prime, hey, boss, you believe? <laughs> you believe now? Um, so, C.D. Lamb, last year, the number one receiver as Amari Cooper was shipped off to Cleveland. It took him about, what, four games before he kind of – he struggled a little bit, I thought, just trying to figure out – what it is to be the one that he took off, had a Pro Bowl year. It was this game. It was the Giants game on the road. The second half of the Giants game is when he really clicked. So what are we expecting from the Oklahoma Sooner this season? I mean, he's, he's you know, last year heading into it, I remember the distinct, him, him talking before the season, he had this confidence and this swagger that we, we hadn't quite seen before. And I remember it, it really sticking out of like, okay, this seems like a, a concentrated effort to like step up as he's going to be the one. And we talked to him during training camp 
And he said that that was a mindset that he believed he absolutely had to embrace and that it's not just talk that, yeah, when you're the one, you have to act a, a different way. And he continued again today when we talked to him out in the hallway. He was talking about, you know, I, I'm not worried about my contract. I'm worried about I got a Super Bowl to win and touchdowns to catch. He said, I'm already up at the top with the other receivers. If you have questions, I'll show you this year. <laughs> Dak's getting asked about, you know, oh, you know, the the you lost your first two games of your career against the Giants and CD's walking by and just goes 10 and 0. And he's talking about the last 10 games Dax played against the Giants. And so CD's incredibly confident. I think he answered every question you could have had for him about being the number one. He's a dog. I mean, whatever whatever the capabilities of this scheme will allow him to do, he's going to do. Like, I think he's there's going to be no meat on the bone to take a, a line from Joseph Randall back in the day. Good old Joe <laughs> Randall. John. No, I think CD is a uh, terrific man. I, um, I like the way he plays. I like, uh, and what I'm talking about is he seems calm and poised in the moment. You know what I'm saying? We've seen the receivers around here uh, and around the league who just they seem like they just lose it from here and there because they're so emotional. But uh, I like where his headspace is. Uh, I think he's a good dude in addition to being a good player, and that means he's a good teammate. And uh, I expect him to have a big year. Can I say this? And, and, and you're the host. You can say whatever you want to. Well, I walk down this road gingerly because I actually I hold the 88 jersey to be special. Mm -hmm. Okay. He looks the part yeah. of being someone to wear the 88. I thought last year, especially after those first couple of games, boom, he got it. What we saw in training camp and the way he goes about his business, that's a difference maker right there. That's what the 88 jersey is about you making a difference and you making spectacular plays. He has that ability. That's not blowing smoke. That's not being a cowboy homer or anything like that. This kid has it. And I feel like we're going to see more of it because I feel like last year he had to get his feet wet because there's a difference when you're when you're the number one guy. It's, it's just different. And he figured it out. So I, I, well, you know I, it's different because either people are rolling to you or they're doing special things to take away your best routes. So <coughs> everybody knows the ball's coming to you at winning time. And uh, it takes a certain kind of dude to want the ball and want the pressure at, and embrace it, you know, when it's time to win a game. Right, take a deep breath before you talk. Let me say Maybe this. Maybe two. So you get it? <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me say this. What? Come on, Paul, Paul. Let, let me say this. When C.D. Lamb was with Dak Prescott on the field with Dak Prescott, he's oh, he special. Got he got C. stats. C.D. Lamb has 178 catches for 2,402 2, yards. 15 touchdowns in 32 games with Dak Prescott. The biggest difference between last year, when Dak came back, CD took off. If you saw the, the numbers, look at his numbers with Cooper Rush. Look at his numbers with Dak Prescott. Just a different player with Dak Prescott on the field. And his full 17 games with Dak Prescott, he's going to put up those numbers. Is CD top five right now? See, that, that's a question because, I mean, he's not fast. He's 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 I mean he's a four five guy. You know, he's not, you know, Chase. You right. know, four three. You know, he didn't have a catch of forty yards last year. And you know, if you so look he, at the top receivers, they 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 get five or six of those. And so I think that's the one thing that keeps him out of there because other guys can match his production, but then they give you that super big play ability that he hadn't shown us yet. Uh, it, He's definitely behind the the highest he'd be would be five because it's Jefferson Hill Chase Adams right off the bat that's four Got that cut. I would I would take who Cooper Cup I mean Cooper Cup they're talking about he has nerve issues I don't I don't know how, I don't know how much we Cooper can Cooper Cup will never Cooper be Cooper Cup again looks like hold on it's a player? question it's my fantasy team <laughs> <laughs> Hold love, on, player. Hold love, on. Love, love the You're not a doctor, okay? You don't, you don't have a doctorate from, from Texas. You got a journalism degree. You had not talked but, to anybody, so just stop. But I, ha I, have, stop I have seen receivers fall off a cliff. Stop it. Stop it. Miles Austin. <laughs> Cooper Cup Miles Austin. Really? Really? No, it, it's interesting because th there was a two years ago. Diggs. Diggs would be five. That was the fifth name yeah. that just popped my head. Two, two years ago, and, 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 and you, my boy in Detroit is climbing. And, and I mean, there's some, you know, you, you got Waddle, and I mean, there's just a lot of good young receivers. Two years ago, there was a, I, I thought Cooper Cup was on his way to a Hall of Fame career. I don't know if he's going to be a Hall of Famer. Because I don't know. First of all, the quarterback is not going to be there anymore in L.A. You know, after years. So he's hurt. You know, that's, coming, that's the question. Coming it's, it's, into it's this season, when we talk about the top five guys, I'm putting Cooper Cup there. 
how was he? Was he top five last year? Last year, I think no. he missed the final eight games. Still had 75 catches, 875 yards, six touchdowns. He was not a top five receiver and, last and, year. And dude, still, with, with that amount of play, he still had an impact on the game. So. Would you put Stafford around the top ten while there's questions about his health? It's the same situation. But for me, he was. I've never viewed Matt the way other people have viewed Matt. I've always thought he was a guy who had arm talent, but the results just – we're not there, and you know, got got to get with Sean McVay and went on a great run. Um, you know, it's, it's funny we had this. And see, Cooper Cup, I mean, that that was it. I was there at that Super Bowl game. That wasn't a pitch and catch between him and Cooper it, Cup. It, it, and then, you know, with all due respect, I get in trouble around here re- for talking about Stafford. The yeah. refs did help the Rams out with a couple flags right there at the end. It, oh it, no! Wait, do it again. Do it's it again. funny when we talk about receivers that we don't mention Metcalf and we don't mention AJ Brown. Who I think should be in that conversation. I think Brown's put right there with CD, yeah, roughly. You know, and, and and DK Metcalf, he'd had a consistent quarterback the last couple of years. You know, I ain't putting him that high yet. I mean, he cool. Yeah, he cool. I mean, he cool. He good, but I agree with you, John. You wrong. He, he ain't special. He got I mean, special talent, DJ, but he ain't special. Oh, he got special talent. Hey, look, yeah. I, 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 I don't I, know why I, it hasn't come together. But well, he had, the fact that we say well, it hasn't come together. Well, I mean, I don't know that it hasn't why. come together. Because when he's on the field, he's I, I do. Think, he's a beast. I do think this year he goes another level. Who? With, with, Metcalf? Metcalf, Metcalf and CD. I, I think both of these. These are two guys I, mean, I would definitely project to say. We got Debo. We'll hmm? we got Debo. Uh, Debo's problem is. Some dude named Run CMC who's going to cut into his ability to uh, get some of those. That's those his stats, racks. but as a player, he's a bad man. I like Debo Samuel, but I just think in that offense this year, I just think that and, and Iuk has started to actually live up to his first round. Time. I think he's just going to get squeezed out a little bit because they got a lot of mouths to feed in that offense. There. So, and look, his best his best work came as running back. <laughs> it really did. It really more so as a receiver. You look at Debo. You look at Debo. Just it's it's the running back, the running back stuff that he does. It's better. Let's go to the defensive player of the year. The odds are out. Micah Parsons is number one of the four to one odds to be the defensive player of the year. Um, number two, Miles Garrett. Uh, then it's T.J. Watt, Nick Bosa, and Sauce Gardner. If Micah's healthy, he's going to get it. And I, I think that because. If, I think Nick Bosa obviously is terrific. He's great. But the fact that he hadn't practiced, he just showed up, it may take him two or three weeks before he really gets cranked up. And Micah can do some damage. And, um, you know, New York, first game, Sunday night, do his thing. Listen, listen. um, Micah's might have has as well as Micah's played the last couple of years and been runner for defensive player of the year, he didn't necessarily know what he was doing all the time. He was doing on sheer athleticism. He has grown leaps and bounds this offseason in terms of technique. And I think he had one of the most impressive training camp, for most dominant training camp performances I've ever seen. You know, and, and I didn't see the the, the heyday of Cowboys. The no, the heyday of the Cowboys in training camp, you know, in, in, in dominance, just sheer dominance. But from from 97 on, every training camp, every year, Nobody is put on a show wreck practice like Michael Parsons is wreck practice. That Des Bryant did a few years against some it's scrub, questionable scrub cornerbacks. Mm-hmm. Questionable cornerbacks. <laughs> okay, you know, and, and and going off on those little don't take shots at Tyler Patton Tyler like Patton, that. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, but but to what he did in practice day in and day out, I've never seen a performance like that. I mean, yeah, it's basically how healthy is he on December 1st? Because last year he was super banged up by December and he wore down and he wasn't able to be the same player. But that's the thing. He has completely elevated his game, like, technique-wise. He's he's always been a freak of nature, but he was, was giving guys serious problems with, like, what was in his toolbox during training camp. And, yeah, there's there's no reason why, as long as he's healthy and he's he's playing near the top of his game, like, he's a 20-sack player. Absolutely. Yeah, he's, he's going to threaten the sack record, and, and and I know the Cowboys don't want to say they moved him to end, but he will, he he played eighty percent in rusher edge rusher last year compared to linebacker. That's only let him do what he does best. All right, let's get the quarterback uh, in the media mash here. Let's uh, look at a couple games this, for, for this weekend, and actually let's go with tonight. All right, start with you, Bobby. Kansas City, Detroit. Who you got? Kansas City. I, I mean, just good matchup for them. Uh, the Travis Kelsey thing bothers me, but I can't pick against the Chiefs at the crib. 
Detroit City. Detroit is better than you think. Amar St. Brown is one of the, a, a special receiver. Y'all don't know him, but the dude can play. They got weapons on that offense. Where do you play ball at? USC, I think. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is, about ready. This, 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 this is really this. about whether they're ready for the moment. They, they Listen, they ready in Kansas City with, without Kelsey. I don't – it's stupid to play him. And if you play him, he's going to be limited. The uh, it's, it, So I did the players' lounge. Everybody else went with Detroit except me. I took Kansas City. I said uh, Bucker wins it for him 27-26. These Thursday games on Chris NBC, Jones is going to be a big loss. It is. But uh, these Thursday games on NBC – just favor the home team. It's 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 opening night. It's at your crib. The rays and the flag, the banner and everything. It's it's tough to win. Um, no. let's go to Sunday night football on NBC Five. Start with you, Clarence. Cowboys, Giants. Who you got? Uh, Dak Prescott has a ten game winning streak against the Giants. Lost the first two ten game winning streak. The Cowboys own the Giants. Cowboys. Cowboys by a touchdown. I mean, if they. If they're the team that they told us they were, they got to win this game. So it's, you have to go with Dallas. All right. Make it a clean sweep here. I'll take the Cowboys, too. All right. That's the Media Mash for today. We're back on Tuesday. Are you back Tuesday? Or you got slotted in on a different day. Nobody's told me yet. I'll have to ask Okay. Matt. You figured on that. You figured on that. Jacques, you can come here any old time. And, uh, <laughs> Why is that, Jacques? Because I'm president of the JJTV. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And Clarence, it's a good answer. A Clarence, good answer. Uh, have fun in T Town. Is the text? Yes, Texas but before we leave, I'll be in T Town this weekend. But okay. tonight, for you people in DFW, come to LBs. Got the original '88 Drew Pearson for the Cowboys and chill. Happy hour. Jack Taylor gonna be there. Calvin Michael's gonna be there. Are you gonna be there? No, I'm not. I have a rehearsal, sir. I have to do a rehearsal. T C U Gala banquet that I'm uh, having to do rehearsal for tomorrow as we get ready to do things on Friday. So. You know, we got the alum in here doing some things. How, how did that Gala do last Saturday? Uh, Gala lost by three points unexpectedly. <laughs> <laughs> Hate to see it. Yep, it is what it is. Sooner or later, Sonny was going to have to lose his first regular season game with the Cowboys. I mean, with the, the Horn Frost. <laughs> Clarence Hill, Bobby Belt, Jock Taylor, I'm Dewey Scruggs, Chris Beam, and everybody else here at DallasCowboys.com Radio. Thank you. We'll talk to you Tuesday. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!